It's David from Levika Photography again, and today I'm going to vlog. And um, Komika sent me this little microphone for my phone. And this thing's actually kind of cool. It just plugs in here and flips forward, and you can create a kind of a vlogging setup. But not only that, um, one of the things I'm really excited about a ring light. And I've been wanting one of these for a long time. And the prices have just been through the roof on ring lights. So finally they came down in price. I'll put a link to this one in the description, but I'm actually excited to set this up. So let me just set it up really quick and we'll see what this combo is like and if I can actually vlog really fast. Because that's one of the problems that I hate about doing vlog videos is you start to ramble like I am now and you have to cut all that stuff out and it's all the editing and fixing stuff. And eh, I just want to be able to set up like a vlogging station that looks really nice and then I can just use it quick. So yeah, let's let's see what this looks like. Comes with the bag. Pretty much just about set up. That's bigger than I thought. Comes with a uh, Bluetooth shutter release for iPhones and Android. So you get some different options. Um, cell phone clamps or tripod head. This might work. Comes with a decent looking power supply. What the hell is in here? No way! Okay, that's, that's cool. So this thing even comes with its own light stand, which is really nice. And this is a cool looking light stand. So this is very similar to the ones that I use at the other studio. The um, ProMaster stands. Looks like it's designed differently, but it's actually a really nice light stand. I like that. Let me go ahead and mount that on there because it's so nice. Actually, this would be perfect for Zoom calls too, I think. On the back, it has two knobs. That's your brightness setting on one side, and then your color temperature setting on the other. Very basic. Cool. Okay, probably about there. You don't need a lot because then the more light you throw into yourself, the more you're like, hmm. Well, how do I look? I think I actually look pretty good. It's just weird because the one of the things I really like about ring lights is the circles. The reason why I never uh, bought a ring light is because I made one a long time ago and I've used this a lot and I've got two different bulbs for it. These are probably the daylight bulbs and then I have some warming ones. It's ridiculous but this is a bunt cake pan that I wired up out the back and I mean I went hardcore with this. It even has its own dimmer so you know I I made this like 10 years ago, and the problem is it works so well that I haven't bothered to get a different light because I'm like, well, I'll just use that one because it, it, it just works. And it does. It just works. Well, that didn't really work, so my phone crapped out on me. But what do you guys think about the Comique mic? I think it actually sounded pretty good. I don't know. We'll have to compare it against the GoPro Hero 7, which is what I'm on now. How is 2020 treating you guys? <sighs> This has been, hands down, the worst fucking year ever. I have never seen all of my family and friends so divided over everything. It's, it's mind-blowing how bad it really is. It's insane. Let's just give you a rundown of what 2020 gave us so far. Trump got impeached. Locusts invaded Africa. Volcanoes and earthquakes attacked the Philippines. The coronavirus started traveling. The U.S. attacked Baghdad. I don't even remember that. Did we do that? Australia caught on fire. The entire country just burned down. It was crazy. And Kobe died. And apparently at first it was in China, then it was moved to California. What a tough year. That was just January. And then the first person with the coronavirus died, and that caused the great toilet paper depression, which in turn crashed the stock market. So, yeah. That was fun. 
Trump started calling the coronavirus the Kung Flu and started blaming everybody in Wuhan for making it a government Chinese test facility to kill off Americans. Remember that? And then somehow he got acquitted. I'm not sure exactly how he did that, but he did. And then murder hornets happened. Remember those? Good time. They showed up in Seattle, apparently. That was just February. In March, the lockdown started in New York City. And uh, that's when I also started my new channel. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, it's called Davin's Random. That's where I do a lot of just random videos, car stuff, that sort of thing. A lot of Porsche 928 stuff, some Toyota FJ. I installed a hot water heater in my house and filmed it. Towards the end of March, we went into lockdown. So that's pretty much where we went on vacation for two weeks. That's the reason why I started the channel is I had time to actually do videos to build it up. And it was actually kind of a refresher because I had a laundry list of stuff I wanted to do on the Porsche 928. So it allowed me to actually get some of that done. But that was just March. So April happened. Do you remember that in April, this was only a couple of months ago, Brittany burned down her home gym. That was good. How the hell did she do that? The YouTube video Plandemic was released. That was a good one. That was a freaking fiasco. And then somehow Bill Gates became public enemy number one. Everybody thought that he was putting microchips in people, which is nuts. And then people started attacking 5G towers. It, it seems like, as a nation, we just seem to get dumber. And then Kim Jong-un died. And then he came back to life in April. Then his sister took over, which was even weirder. And then May. May was rough. May was hands down the worst month ever. So right at the uh, very beginning of May, um, that's when the riots started. And that's when George Floyd died. And that's when everybody started uh, protesting. Now, as far as protesting goes, I am all for it. I totally believe in it. You got to make your voice heard. And I think that when people protest, it gets the point across. But then the looting happened. This is where all the problems came in. The looting was a dramatic freaking mess. That's the only thing I can say. So what you guys need to know is my studio, Method Art, is only a block from Scottsdale Fashion Square. Yeah, that was a lot, a lot of stress. I was sitting at home going, oh my God, what do I need to do? Should I go down there? Don't worry, this isn't real. This is just plastic. But I mean, these are always plastic anyway, but this thing is literally a, a dummy. I found out all my neighbors down there were sleeping in their studios with their guns. And so if those rioters and looters would have gotten farther than where they did, it would have been violent. I'm really glad that they didn't because Arizona sometimes is literally like living in the wild, wild west. It's, it's a little crazy here. The shortage of ammo here in the stores, but not at your neighbor's house. <laughs> Those three weeks for me were total hell. That's the only thing I can say. I was under so much anxiety. I was only getting about three hours of sleep a night. I was going down to my studio at like two o'clock in the morning, sleeping on my couch there. And then, you know, getting up at six and then meeting with all my neighbors down there. And yeah, it was insane. I just didn't know what to do. That's why you guys didn't see me is because I have not really filmed anything. To give you an idea of how much stress that I am under with all this stuff going on right now, I have a Mavic Air 2 that I bought two months ago that's still in the box. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet because I just haven't found that time to be able to decompress enough to actually want to enjoy to do something. My creativity level is just plummeted. So I'm trying to do little things to really kind of boost it back up and I'm hoping that something like this works because I need something to work. June was interesting too. Basically, in the beginning of June, people started seeing UFOs in Sedona and posting videos on it. Sedona, Arizona, here, just, you know, um, 90 miles north of where I'm at. Yeah, that, that was pretty weird. But the thing that was even weirder is a lot of people started posting videos of UFOs in Chile. And in Chile, the UFOs that they were showing in these videos were, was actually one that was filmed here in Phoenix by several different people like nine or ten years ago. So I don't believe in UFOs, but that is really weird when you see the same thing in two different places. It's just bizarre. 
but I've never been abducted, as far as I know. And then the entire state of Arizona caught on fire. Fires to the west of us, there was fires to the north, there was fires to the south, there was fires to the east. Phoenix is in a valley, and all the mountains around it at some point were on fire. Yeah, and then Goodyear was on fire. And then there is a warehouse fire. And then somebody burned down an apartment complex under construction. And then a train caught fire. Trump started taking hydroxychloroquine. Why? <laughs> I had no idea. He said it would work. Everybody else said it didn't. So he just decided to start taking it. The guy is nuts. I still don't know how we got to where we are as a country. I just, I'm baffled by this. You know, the, the best thing I saw was... Uh, a meme on Facebook and this sums up our entire 2020 people as we know it in their current state of mind so that's pretty much I guess where I'm at for the first half of 2020 um, July has not been as bad except for the coronavirus I take it very seriously I keep face masks in here I wear a face mask when I have clients in here and a lot of people don't think that the coronavirus is real or that you need to wear a face mask. My neighbor down the street, four houses down, died of the coronavirus. My neighbor, two doors down from my studio, the owner of Frank and Lupe's restaurant, Teddy, he died of the coronavirus. Uh, right now, I've got a friend that's in ICU that's hoping to get out soon because it looks like she's recovering, but uh, her husband died of the coronavirus. Things to look forward to. So, this is one of the coolest and weirdest things that I have seen yet. This is the Innovatronics 550 watt light. Now, it's not a 550 watt second strobe, but it is kind of a strobe. It's an LED, but it has flash capability. And this is really kind of ingenious. So, this is the only strobe and video light that I've seen that actually works really well with Android in both ways. And it also works on the iPhone. And so I am doing kind of an in-depth um, review on this thing and I'm working on it right now and I just wanted to let you guys know that it exists. It's Bluetooth. It comes with this flash trigger that you can put on the camera or you can hand hold it and then it comes with another remote trigger and you can cycle between right, video light get ready. what the hell my phone just went off that was fun basically this thing's a video light slash strobe and it works via bluetooth with your phone and it has this shutter uh, release that you can just turn on and pop and it's it's really kind of cool it's very old school as far as how it looks. It looks very first gen. So this is what it looks like when it's on. And this is pretty much full power. But basically it has this strobing effect that you can do to it. And this video light simulates different things. Fire, like if you were to put a fire gel in front of it. And then this is like police lights. And then this is just a standard strobe. And then this is supposed to simulate like watching TV, I guess, or something. I don't know. There's a couple of different things that it can do. I'm going to do a full review on these. I think you guys really like this because they're just so weird. And I have two of them. So I can do a two light setup with it. But they're cool. This is the first Bluetooth lighting system that I've seen that actually works with Android. So look forward to that review. Now the other one is this. And it's called the Illuminate spectrum and this is another oh no it's not in here All right. this is another light that's really kind of unusual and this one's also controlled via bluetooth and it's just a standard regular video light um, I love wands and this one's RGB so you can change the color of it I wish you could do it somehow on the outside when I was looking at the directions it looked like you could but it also does different strobing effects. The cool thing about this is that it's supposed to be IP67 or 68 rated, basically waterproof and submersible. So that's the thing that I'm really excited about this. This is called Luminate. 
and uh, I'll review this a lot deeper here in a couple of weeks. Uh, just really unusual, really cool. Of course, the DJI Air 2. Uh, I bought this drone two months ago. It's still sitting in a box on top of my filing cabinet. Right now, it's just too hot to even go outside to use it. And I can't really go anywhere yet to really test it out. So it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to have to get up early in the morning to be able to use it while it's not so hot out. So hopefully I'll get to that. Now the other thing too, the next lens comparison coming up is the Sony 35mm f1.8 versus the Rokinon f1.4. And this is going to be a good review. I think you guys are going to like this. Uh, I get into the technical aspects of each one, and let me tell you, the results will surprise you. So look forward to that. Uh, that should be interesting. And then the also up-and-coming one that I want to get out right away because I feel really bad about it, Viltrox sent me this lens, and they didn't even ask me to do anything with it. They just said, would you let us know what you think of this lens? I need to review this lens for you guys because I really, really like this lens. Even though they sent it to me, it's not because it's free, it's because it's really good. I was really surprised by it, so I am going to give you an in-depth review on that. It is the cheapest autofocus lens that's 85 f1.8 on the market for Sony E-mount, and the autofocus is stupid fast. And the thing that's really surprising about this is this is Viltrox's first autofocus lens. So usually when they come out with their first lens, the autofocus kind of sucks, but this thing is actually really good. So yeah, I will get on that for you guys too. The last thing, and it's not here yet, but I ordered the Tokina 17mm to 28mm to millimeter f2.8, and I will be doing a direct comparison with that lens against the Irix 15mm f2.8 four and the Tokina 20 millimeter f2 because those are the two prime lenses that I'm using now. From the reviews that I've seen on it, it's supposed to be pretty good. I just am not sure. So I decided to order one on a whim and if it works, I'll keep it. If it doesn't, I'll get rid of it. But I was really impressed with the Tamron 2875 still in my bag. So anyway, last thing talking about lenses. The Leawa 100mm f2.8. I just reviewed this and I told you guys that I bought the wrong lens. And I really did. And what I meant by that was I sold my 100mm f2.8 for Sony E and bought the 100mm f2.8 for Nikon uh, AI or Nikon F mount. So this is the DSLR lens. Now why did I do that? And it's really simple because in the macro world, I wanted to be able to do this. And so this is a lens tilt adapter. So it gives me the same, same distance. I'm not getting any closer to it because this technically isn't a macro adapter, but it's actually just an adapter that allows you to tilt the lens. So tilting this a few degrees down uh, gets everything more into focus without having to do focus stacking. And over the last couple of weeks, I've been shooting a lot of jewelry. And that's been the crazy thing. Jewelry has kept me alive this month. And I guess that's one of the last things that I want to touch on is how are you guys doing business-wise if you're a professional photographer through the pandemic? Because for me, I've been doing a lot of product. And it seems like I'm doing a lot of stuff for stores that are moving their inventory online and that's been keeping me extremely busy so you know if you're a wedding photographer an event photographer you should really start looking at some of my product videos because if you learn product lighting you know at least you can stay busy until those event areas come back if they're completely dead in your area here they are i haven't done a wedding since october of last year so if that gives you an idea, everything this year, I only do like three or four weddings a year. Everything this year is canceled. So yeah, there's just nothing I can do about it. Not booked for anything next year. There's nothing going on. So I don't know how event photographers are even living through this. 
But anyway, enough of that. I hope you guys like the ring light because I love this thing. This is really cool. The link to this ring light and the Komiko microphone will be in the description below. Yeah, I guess I'm going to leave it off here. So anyway, I hope you guys like this vlog. Anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you because I'm really curious. Nobody ever comments when I ask them to comment. They just comment about other things. But I really want to know what's going on with you guys in your area, how you feel about this. 2020 has been the most fucked up year yet, and it's going to get more fucked up. And just to let you guys know, on a personal level, like how am I doing personally, I'm depressed. I'm not a manic depressive. I don't need to take any medication or anything for it yet. I hope I don't. But yeah, this is this has been a rough year for me, and it's it's really hard to see all of my friends and family so divided, and it's bad. When I mean bad, I mean like my wife and I are not even talking to each other right now. It's just nothing's good. But the whole thing is my personal life sucks. It really does. My social life non-existent. Uh, my business life luckily is okay, so I'm still working. So I've got that. Anyway, enough of that. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you guys. I'll talk to you later. See ya.